Hello everyone, this is the Nemesis X, and you've seen this before on this channel, but this one is using the Zeus board, an all-in-one flight controller and ESC. I'm also using the Rotor X 1107 7600 KV motors, Jim Fan 2540 props, BTX 02, Foxy or Predator micro camera, and my favorite battery strap from Airblade. Set up like this, it weighs 89.69 grams. Bottom plate is 3 millimeters thick. Top plate is 1.5 millimeters thick. Hammer pod is also 1.5 millimeter thick. The eagle eyed amongst you might have noticed some low throttle oscillations, and I think that comes down to soft mounting, because after messing with the PIDs for quite some time, I just decided to go fly it and have some fun, because it very rarely affected the flight, pretty much only on takeoff and landing. I didn't see it. Maybe you can go back and diagnose some other spots where you could see that little yaw waggle there from time to time, but I really didn't want to go back and rework it in order to be able to soft mount everything, so I just wanted to go have some fun. Uh, the things that I like most about this is, one, oftentimes in micros we don't have the ability to not land on our battery, so we end up really scuffing up our batteries quite a bit. And I don't know about you, but sometimes that uh, that landing gets me because I usually bring it in a little bit too low and then I get the air mode bounce and I bounce around. But with like this, you get to actually, with even with some camera tilt like I've got there, you can still kind of see the ground with a super wide angle camera. And so you can bring it down and you can oftentimes land. On the bottom of mine, I've just stuck some cabinet bumpers and oddly enough, they've stayed on there through all the dirt and crashes that I've had. So no worries there. Um, the Micro Predator cam, there is, I, I bought six of these. And I really like the image, but unfortunately, there is a batch that have, I think, a lens problem has been reported. Now, I, I reached out to Fox here, and I heard Buck is back, because I've got three of these cameras now that have jello in them. And if I take it out, 
and I put it in something else, then there's no jello in the video. Now, some have said that that's a PID tuning problem because you've actually got oscillations and the way that the CMOS camera works versus a CCD camera, that's why you see the jello. In this particular case, I took the PIDs almost down to nothing and I could still see the jello. It actually would only make it worse, it would never make it better. Uh, so I decided just to retune it to where I tuned it back to flight feel and would uh, have some fun with it that way. So if you use the Predator micro camera, hopefully they've remedied that. But otherwise they're saying uh, buy a new lens and you uh, fix the jello problem. Apparently it's, it's a lens issue with a first run or two. Originally I had thought about putting the, uh, what is it, the, a, the SHMDR. It's the DVR that's a little tiny thing in here. And uh, I've decided not to do that just because it was fun. Um, because I think that if I were to swap out cameras and getting to the DVR, there just really wasn't a good way inside this particular stack of hitting, getting to the SD card and the button. So that's why you see the void in the front. Uh, otherwise, I probably would have taken my receiver and then moved it up in here somewhere. So it's a little less, well, it's not really exposed, but it's right here on the edge. You also see I've got a little 5 volt regulator up there at front. That was something that I did trying to fix some noise in an earlier edition VTX. It turns out the VTX was just the issue. So I replaced the VTX and then that noise went away. And again, I couldn't be bothered to move the 5 volt regulator out. I probably will at some stage rework it and pull the regulator out because it's really not needed anymore. Because even with the regulator, I had noise and it just, it had to do with that VTX. As far as flight characteristics and the advantage of top mounting battery, I think pilots who are more into acrobatic, doing the the, the big moves and a lot of different moves, inverted yaw spins, split S's, they're gonna see a greater advantage in this. But as far as my style of flight and what I saw, is I, I felt like when I was carrying speed into a corner, that the craft carried the weight a little better. Like sometimes I feel with a bottom mounted battery, especially on 4S because we have that extra cell, I feel like it's being tugged. Say we're coming around a corner this way. I feel like I'm being tugged and I have to give it more and more and more throttle versus I really didn't feel like I had to keep pouring on the throttle to carry my speed with this. It tended to hold the speed better. Uh, that could be just the pilot and him not knowing what he's actually feeling. But that's, that's my diagnosis of that particular feel. Also felt like it was more snappy on the roll axis. And that's probably because the battery in the major point of weight of the quad is more in line with the props. I think you'll find with a top mounted battery that the tuning envelope is also wider. You may change values uh, pretty substantially and might not see that much of a difference. And that's because any of those would really work. The difference could be quite minor. In my particular case, I found that to be true and it, it, it kind of caught me out a little bit because I kept pumping up things and because usually what I do is I pump things up until I start to see issues with the flighter. It becomes too twitchy and then I start decreasing the, the PID. In this particular case, I kept pumping it up. I was like, man, I really don't feel much of a difference. And then I just decided I'd settled on what looked good in the DVR and what felt good on the sticks. Speaking of those PIDs, I'll put the PIDs that I use for this on screen. Keep in mind that is, you know, if you're not using these motors and this build, if you're not using these parts, your results on those PIDs may be different. So keep that in mind. I did turn uh, PT1 on and I'm using uh, Betaflight 3.2.2, I believe, on this one. And I did turn the first two notch filters off. Uh, so that helps with uh, decreasing the prop wash and the motors were coming down cool. Uh, that's something that I think I have to be mindful with with all these machines that I've been flying through these cooler months that when we get closer into the warmer months that I may have to check those motors again because the ambient temperature of the air may have an impact on that and I don't want to start ruining machines just because I, I tuned them too tight for winter months or cooler months. Uh, as far as improvements go, I think I mentioned this in the first one. If you didn't see the first one where I built this with ESCs out on the arms, a more traditional build that we used to do quite a bit and we still can. Uh, I, many people prefer to build that way. That way if you lose an ESC, you just lose one rather than the whole ESC. There's uh, some workarounds for that, but it's quite tedious. Um, the camera is still with a super wide angle lens slightly exposed. Hopefully you can see it there, it noses out just a bit. Uh, we, we could make this a little bit bigger. I know that that's, you know, if you're using a narrow field of view on your lens, then you won't see this. Um, and I don't see it in my picture, but of course if we bump this out just, a, you know, a couple of millimeters to protect that camera a little bit, uh, we might see it, but that's something that, you know, as a designer, you kind of have to take into consideration. Do you do you risk a camera or do you do something else? Um, we could do something else as far as uh, the camera brackets go instead of bumping this out if we didn't want to. Hopefully you can see this, but we've got kind of this four piece um, support and that's the, I'm sure they've taken every consideration to make sure this stays rigid. But I wonder if we angle this back more. This piece here, if we angle this more straight back and kind of blend it into this top piece, 
if that would then allow us to make a little slot so where you can move the camera forward and back. I think that's more and more because there's so many different cameras coming on the market and they have different nose lengths. It's just a couple of millimeters, but it's still different. And some people like a narrower field of view. Some people like myself prefer a wider field of view that we don't need to see more of these camera housings with a vertical slide. I think that's a pretty ingenious thing. We've seen it on a few machines. I know that FlexRC does that with their ascent line. Uh, they have a, a ability, they have the ability to adjust the camera depth and that can then protect our camera lens. Then it's up to the user or the builder to decide where to put their camera lens. Downside of doing something like that is that you do have to kind of crank on the camera in order to keep it in place, keep it from moving around. And if you're using a cheap camera like this that does not, that only has a plastic housing, you really can't crank on these things too much or they just end up splitting out. Here's a different one, not quite as cheap, but it's still, obviously it's not the standard. You can see that it's got a brass housing in there so we can tighten this down a lot more than we can, something like this. There is an option to get an LED bar. I did mention that, I'm quite certain the first time. And I thought about putting it on here, but you know, I fly alone. So those sort of things aren't things I'm looking for, but you people that might fly with others, you might want LEDs for chase videos or just to make your footage a little bit more uh, dynamic. Uh, also, there's a host of things that you can print uh, for this. There is, I don't know what you would call it, but it's like a protection piece you can put right here. I believe it replaces this actually, so that when you do go into grass or something, it doesn't throw stuff into your camera. Uh, there's also bumpers. There are also motor covers that you can print on Thingiverse. I'll link their Thingiverse page. I think there's been a lot of user contributions to that Thingiverse page, so uh, I don't want to say that BRDM or anyone else gets all the credit. I think they've uh, had a number of people come up with different designs because the, the popularity of this does seem pretty good. It does seem like a lot of people are building these. I see uh, a few of them posted on Facebook. I see that the BRDM thread on RC Groups is quite active. So if you're looking to build something like this, um, there are very good resources out there. And of course, you can always contact BRDM and they'll probably help you as best they can. The F3 board held up fine for me and uh, I didn't have any problems. This is my first build with the, the uh, Zeus board and it's it really makes things nice. I think we're going to see this more and more. I'm a little bit curious that we haven't seen any ready to fly products start to use this board because it would really make things clean and make the assembly process faster for them. Maybe the cost of these boards are just prohibitive and they can get the other ones so much cheaper and that's why we haven't seen it yet. VTX antenna mounting is a little bit of a conundrum. Uh, this is where I chose to put mine. It's essentially a very similar spot to where I put the last one. The last one I looped it around here. It's going to really depend on your battery on what you want to do and where it's going to work. But the main point is to just keep it out of your props. Zip tie and a little heat shrink seems to work just fine for me. Uh, as far as the lead length goes, again, uh, you can always shorten your lead as I did by just twisting it up and I would actually plug in the battery and then finalize my battery strap over the top so that it was holding it in place so it wouldn't get into the prop line either. You could also route your battery leads right underneath, come down under here and come straight up through the top. There is a nice gap between the props here, but uh, that's going to make strain relief for your battery lead a little bit more of a challenge. I think you might end up having to do it from the bottom. Run your zip tie through here, create a little slack space in there, and then you could run it up through there. I think either way, you're probably going to have about the same amount of wire length one way or another. Uh, but those are a couple of options for your uh, battery lead positioning. So if you want to build a traditional quad with ESCs on the arms, or you're wanting to use this all-in-one Zeus board, you can do that either way. If you want to have a top-mounted battery on your micro, this is pretty much the only option I'm aware of. There might be others. I don't claim to know every quad in the micro arena, uh, but this is the one that I have, and it's one I'm showing you here today. I think you'll have fun. I don't think that you'll have problems with durability. I think the carbon is top notch. I think the assembly is quite smart. I think the way the bracket holds in here together is just great. It's actually kind of tough to get these things together. Um, I don't want to say tough in the fact that you have to use a wrench or anything on it. You just have to line up things precisely and apply, apply some pressure in order to get them down. I like the fact that they use really small posts because that does re reduce weight. The more metal we have, the more weight we have. With that Zeus board, there's plenty of space in there. It's not nearly as tight as when you use a traditional uh, board with uh, maybe a VTX on top. I think I've seen a few people trying to squeeze in a flight controller with a 20 by 20 VTX on top, but I don't think that's going to work out very well. But if you want to pursue that, just go for it, you know. I do think if you're using these motors and these props and a Zeus board, soft mounting would be in order. I didn't do it in my case and you saw the results. Uh, oh, one last thing. Also in the kit, you might notice these little plastic bits here. These are adapters, so if you have an M3 board, you can still use M3 holes. 
and it was really cool. They they had included those so you can still do a, an M2 board and you, you can use your screws. They work just fine. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please leave those in the section down below. I'll link the RC Group thread. I'll link their Facebook page. I'll link their web shop for the frame down below. If you like micros and you lock top mounted, this is the one to get, I think. I appreciate your time, and thanks for watching.